Okay, so the name of our solution is Bye Bye Buoy Lineless Fishing Pots. Um, my name is Ashley. My name is also Ashley. Our middle names are both Marie. <laughs> I'm Celine. I'm Kira. And I'm Amelia. I'll go ahead and take this next part. Um, so what we wanted to tackle was harmful human and wildlife interactions. Specifically, we wanted to tackle a whale of a problem. What is that problem, you might ask? <laughs> yes. Um, well, as it stands, lobster fishing requires that there's a buoy on the surface with a tether down to your, your actual lobster traps. And what that does is it actually entangles large whales. And we have a sh short video from a professor here at Duke with a simulation he created. Um, Woo, sorry. So it's actually um, a simulation done by Professor Howell here at Duke. And um, what it shows is that whales, when they hit a line like this, their natural instinct is to roll. And they roll because they're trying to get out of it, but more often than not, it further entangles them in the rope. And instead of the rope just breaking, they end up carrying it with them along with some traps or the buoy, and it causes stress on them and prevents them from being able to eat or dive or mate or breathe. Any of the above can happen. But we also noticed that this is not just, oof, this is not just a one-fold problem. There's also the idea that when this happens, it affects the fishermen themselves. They are losing all of this gear to this whale entanglement. The whale, whale, whale. <laughs> As you can see on the slide, this is just a few notable statistics relating to whale entanglement. Uh, this, as Ashley was saying, this problem is really twofold because we have on the one hand, the fishermen who are losing their lines due to the whales taking them away. And also the whales, the lines on the whales significantly decrease the whale's quality of life because it affects the breeding, their eating, their feeding. Um, so we really want to tackle not only the whales problem being bycatch, but also the fishermen's problem in terms of the efficiency of their fishing. Okay, so this slide is our solution. Um, I'm not sure if this thingy, no, that's not working. Okay. Yeah, okay. So in the bottom left corner, you see a traditional lobster pot. So this is essentially a cage that lobster can crawl in. Our solution proposes a line from the lobster pot to this um, buoyant spool, which you can see, and I'll show this little clip. Um, and then between the pot and the spool, we have a line which goes to this box of epoxied electronics, and I can detail what's in this box. Um, and then you see another line which goes from the end of the spool um, to the bottom of the, uh, the box. So in the top, we have a little blow-up of what this epoxied box would contain. Um, you see a battery, a microprocessor, a hydrophone, um, and a magnet with a coil wrapped around it. So the ideal situation is you're a fisherman and you want your pot um, to rise to the surface because it's been sitting down catching lobster for the last 24 hours. So you have a transducer on your boat um, and you use a microphone to play a certain frequency sound. The hydrophone in this box picks up that frequency and understands that that means um, to tell the microprocessor to turn on the battery. When you turn on the battery, the coil creates an electromagnetic field which cancels out the field of the magnet. And these two components, the um, epoxy box of electronics and the iron weight detach from one another. You also see that the, the line from the spool to the electronics detach, so that's another magnetic component. Um, and when this detachment occurs, the spool begins to unravel, and because it's buoyant, it'll rise to the surface. And as long as you're within sight of where your, uh, where your pot was deployed, you see this buoy come to the surface, and you can pull up your pot. So here's a little example. This um, buoyant spool does exist, but currently not for the purpose of picking up lobster pots. But that's what would happen is, is when you play the sound and the magnet um, is essentially turned off, your spool rises to the surface and you collect your pot. So now that Ashley has explained the layout of our product, I'm gonna talk about some of the attractive attributes or the pros of the product. Um, so firstly, from the perspective of the fishermen, this would reduce gear loss as well as cost. Um, so 
as we stated in one of the previous statistics, over 300,000 whales are entangled each year. Um, and so that's also 300,000 nets that need to be replaced. So this would eliminate <laughs> that problem. Um, and now from the whale's perspective, they would no longer be entangled within the nets. Um, it's also a viable option because the battery that's used is inductively rechargeable. Um, so that would eliminate any issue of having to buy batteries each time you want to use the pots. Um, the iron that we would use is safe to leave in the ocean. It wouldn't affect the ecosystem. It would just rust out, um, but there's already iron that's naturally in those ecosystems, so it wouldn't affect that. Um, it's also a relatively low-tech solution, and it's pretty easy to implement. You only need a, a couple extra elements besides the gear that's already on the boat, um, so that would include a microphone as well as the uh, the um, the charger for the battery. Um, so just to give you kind of like our main takeaway points, um, so obviously whale entanglements, uh, especially due to pot fishing, is a really large problem. Um, and there are a lot of people that are really dedicated to solving this, um, which also makes the startup funds available because there are a lot of organizations that are really dedicated to ending this problem. Um, in addition with the fact that it is also already a low cost option. We think that it will be a great switch. Um, there are some technologies already, such as acoustic release, that are viable options, but right now are just incredibly expensive. So our new design makes things um, a lot more cost effective, both for organizations who want to start implementing this um, and the fishermen themselves to continue to invest and realize that it saves them a lot of money by not losing these pots in this fishing line. Um, so this low-tech substitute overall we think could be really easily implemented. Um, it's low cost, it's low tech, and it could help both the fishing industry and the whales. Thank you. Thank you so much, Team One. <laughs> Any questions for Team One really quickly? Uh, great presentation, really liked it. I was wondering uh, what are possible ways that you could address the kind of territorial culture that a lot of lobster fishermen have where the buoys are literally marking their territory and things of that nature. Okay, can you hear me? Oh yeah. Um, so we had actually discussed this a little, uh, sort of anticipated this question of how do you tell where your traps are underwater if you can't see them with a buoy? And the idea is that um, there are new technologies that make us able to track things that we can't see, including like apps and radar and things of that nature. Do you want to speak more to yeah, that? Yeah, sure. So, so like one of the cons of something like this is that you don't know where your buoy is once you deploy it. You can take a GPS coordinate, but with currents, those things, your trap will likely move around. Um, so our idea is if we're eliminating a buoy, and fishermen don't necessarily want published online where their traps are set, um, is we would uh, potentially develop some sort of app um, where they could put in GPS coordinates and using data on current movement um, track where their buoy is potentially. But then uh, our fre the frequency of the microphone that we're looking at could travel far enough that you don't need to be super, super close for it to, for it to um, release. Thanks. Sure. Uh, one more thing. Along the lines of, you know, not wanting other fishermen to know where your traps are set ahead of time, but being able to detect where they are if they do encounter them, uh, it's kind of, you could you could essentially make, can I say a single hole? This, where it's, it's like range based. You could make a range based app where like if you're within like a kilometer of these traps so you don't accidentally lay traps on top of them or too near other people's traps but without giving away the location to everybody, uh, you could create a system devised that way.